It's all about choices in your life. There are so many options out there. And when you have the industry mandated blinders on, on the treadmill, being told, never being told you're good enough, it's easy to get to get the feeling that this is all there is to life. There is an entire world out there and the health of the system is not on your shoulders. Thank you for joining us today on Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jen Barna, and I'm hoping that we can work together to make some much needed changes in our healthcare system. If you're interested in learning how you can prioritize your own well being in order to stay on the path to success, success as you define it, you've come to the right place. I want to let you know that we're here to help you begin to do that with our completely confidential 24-7 Counseling Plus Success Coaching Wellbeing Plan, and it costs less per month than you'll spend on a single dinner out. And it's not just for doctors, it's for everyone with group discounts available. At Doc Working, we're here to help you thrive every day. We're here for you all the time, literally. The 24-7 Confidential Care Line is already helping over 80,000 healthcare professionals with things like time and stress management, decision fatigue, imposter syndrome, setting boundaries, all the way to more serious things like PTSD, eating disorders, coping with grief, and others. And we would love to help you your team, your patients, your family, and friends. Whether you're practicing medicine or working in a non-clinical field, we're here for you. And thank you for being here with us for this conversation today. I'm so happy to have with me my good friend, entrepreneur, nomadic telemedicine specialist and consultant, TikTok celebrity, and co-owner of NewScript the app bringing the international healthcare community together. Dr. Tom Davis, welcome to Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. Welcome back, Tom. Thank you, Jen. It's a privilege to be here. I am excited to talk with you today, and I see that you are on the nomadic path out somewhere in the world. Where where are you? (laughs) So we're, uh, we've been in the Keys all winter. Uh, my wife and I have an adventure van that's uh, well stocked with all of the latest uh, electronics to keep us connected. Unfortunately, it's in the shop and uh, we're having a little uh, um, logistics problems down here in the Keys. So that's why there might be a little bit of a, a lag between you and I. But uh, it's very nice and warm and it hasn't snowed yet this season. So that's good. Well, that's one of the advantages of the nomadic life lifestyle for sure. And I am com- completely fascinated with that lifestyle. And I would love to talk with you the whole time just about that. But I want to give people a chance to hear about new script because maybe our listeners might not have, might not know about it yet. Can you tell us about what you and John Jerica are doing with the new script app and what what that is? Well, John and I got together before the pandemic, and the challenge that we saw was that there was no place where clinicians and healthcare workers could gather uh, in privacy, where they could be supportive of each other uh, and and feel less isolated, but also help each other on their journey. And you can't really use a social media platform that we have now because there's no privacy. If you're an employed physician uh, and your organization is of any size at all, I promise you that they are, uh, they have a line item in their budget to purchase your keystrokes from these different social medias. They know exactly what you're posting and you give them permission when you sign up. So there's really no place for someone to explore career alternatives uh, privately. So we created uh, the new script community. Uh, which is basically a social media community staffed by almost two dozen faculty members who have expertise across the the spectrum of of non-clinical and clinical alternative careers. And folks come on, they lurk, 
They post their questions. They engage with these uh, coaches who normally would charge thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of dollars per engagement uh, in, in an effort to explore what their interests are so that when they're ready to make a move, they have the most information possible. And also, Jen, it gives folks the idea that they are not alone. That is such a huge barrier to making positive change in your life is the feeling that you are somehow defective and there's something wrong with you. We're all gaslighted at work so strongly that isolation is just an enormous barrier. And that's the purpose of the isolation and the gaslighting and really need a variety of different paths for you to feel less alone. So you can lower that barrier to making positive change. And that is what the new script community is all about. Well, I love what you're doing. And it's interesting that you mentioned that about being alone because that is so important to be part of a community that allows you to understand that you're not the only person experiencing whatever you may be dealing with as a healthcare professional. I was just on the line a few minutes ago with a chief wellness officer at, at a, one of the uh, highest ranked academic institutions in, in the country. And she was saying that she feels guilty, you know, for some of the, the feelings that she has about related to burnout and those kind of um, paths that we find ourselves on just really through the normal kind of work that we do. And when you're alone facing guilt and shame, it can amplify it into uh, seeming like a much bigger thing than it is. And once you're part of a community where you're realizing that you're sharing the, this path with other people and they are having similar experiences, it really begins to minimize it and makes you realize that it's a normal part of this pathway of working in the healthcare profession, whether you choose to stay in clinical work or whether you choose the non-clinical pathway, which, um, the new script app really provides some tremendous options. And I also am a huge advocate for people having multiple streams of income and having side gigs that can allow people to practice medicine and have some non-clinical side careers is another really important option to consider nowadays, I think, to keep yourself in the driver's seat. You make an That's interesting observation when you say that you're on the phone with a wellness uh, person from a leading uh, uh, health system. When I first started getting into this back in 2012 or so, uh, most of my clients were the stereotypical clients, the older clinicians who had you know had enough or the clinicians that were three to five years out of residency and just weren't getting what they bargained for. And that was pretty much my bread and butter until a couple of years before the pandemic. Then I started getting outreach from residents. That really struck me. So residents didn't want anything to do with clinical medicine. I mean, these are the residents. I mean, they're the ones supposed to be most excited. And right before the pandemic, I started having medical students contact me as well. Then the pandemic hit and kind of everybody kind of froze in place because they wanted to help and all the stresses. But now in the past mm, six months, uh, I've had a whole new population of folks reach out to me. And these are folks that are at our apex institutions. These are institutions whose names that you would recognize as producing the leaders of our profession. And these folks are telling me now that that they're done. They have seen things during the pandemic that they didn't agree with ethically or morally, and they're done. They they want out of the system and they see telemedicine as a bridge or they see one of the other service lines that we offer on on um, uh, on new script as a way to make that transition. And, you know, these are folks that are going to we're supposed to be leaders these are young clinicians and they're supposed to be leaders of our profession. And now they're bailing and it's going to get to the point where there's going to have to be some systemic change. If uh, there's going to be enough labor to, to support the healthcare system. And then, so it's our job to make sure that we have healthy clinicians that can uh, re-engage when the healthcare system finally starts taking steps in the right direction. 
Absolutely. The healthcare system has got to recognize that we should have this type of well being support throughout our careers. It shouldn't be something that we have to get to a crisis to to be provided with any kind of resources. It, it should be normal to be having resources that support our mental well being and support our work life balance throughout our careers. So I I agree. I mean it it's got to change. And if it doesn't change, it's just going to become more and more difficult to access healthcare in this country. And it, it's tragic to see it headed in that direction. It's really going to take the fortunate senior clinicians. You and I would be mentoring residents. We'd be mentoring uh, less experienced clinicians in our in our clinical role. 20 years ago, That's that would be part of our career path because we were mentored in turn. And now the system has excluded us from that role because we might mentor people off the treadmill. So uh, there are select folks and you can find them on LinkedIn. You can find them during Google searches who've really committed their lives to nurturing the folks that are less fortunate and uh, trying to keep us all in the game so that those of us who can still do clinical medicine outside the system stay engaged and those that are just, they just need some sort of bridge away for their own personal wellness, have a path where they can live a fulfilling life. And, you know, that's why, uh, that's why I'm very excited uh, to be working with Doc Working uh, uh, through the Clinicians Cooperative app. Yes, I, we are very excited to be working with you too. So new script members actually come in and they are both members of Doc Working and members of New Script as part of their New Script subscription. They get the basic Doc Working success videos every week and they will have the option to add on other courses and credits um, for, for continuing education credit if they choose. And so we're, we're thrilled to be partnering with you on that. And I want to hear more too about the growing international community, because I'm very curious about the perspective and the feedback that you're getting from people all over the world as healthcare providers that are coming in to new script. So we have uh, members in our community from six of the seven continents. We haven't landed anybody from Antarctica yet. Uh, but there is a common thread, and that is that the the system in which they're working is forcing them to make different decisions than what they would otherwise make in their patients' interests. And that's true in Great Britain. It's true in Canada. Uh, it's true in Europe. Interestingly enough, the uh, clinicians that we engage with both over the platform and personally that seem to be the most satisfied are the ones in uh, in Central Africa because they are free of all of the payment nonsense and they really are able to focus on the well-being of their patients. They don't have enough resources, but their own personal mission can be fulfilled. And I have come to the conclusion, Jen, that most of the burnout it comes from the fact that the folks who go into healthcare are mission driven and their mission is very different than the folks who are calling the shots. Those folks, they have one mission and that is to maximize their personal and systematic compensation. I mean, it sounds easy to say that it sounds, you know, like making them look like evil capitalists, but I, I got to call it like I see it. Uh, you you're not what you say you are. You you are what you do, and uh, you know that is the conclusion that I have been forced to draw from many many different personal experiences. But when you get to these folks in Central Africa, they're able to do what they need to for the patient. Now they can't always do what they want to do because of a lack of resources. That's not because somebody is standing over their shoulder trying to redirect their decisions in the interest of the payer or in the interests of the employer. And uh, interestingly enough, there is a trickle of uh, physicians from the United States, uh, a few from Canada and one from uh, Great Britain, who I have connected with some of the resources there in Central Africa. And they're doing short term immigration there to see if they like practicing medicine under those under those systems. Now, I'm not saying that that is for everybody by by no means, but. Uh, you know, if you are, if it's a choice between not doing clinical medicine at all or, or doing it someplace like that, 
it becomes a viable choice. And that really is a commentary on the on the healthcare system that we are working within today. Tell me more about how the members of NewScript are communicating with each other and benefiting from the community side of the app. So it is always very challenging to start any kind of network. The term that you're looking for is a network effect. That's when you get enough people in one place, they will start engaging. And of course, the threshold for that for being in person is only about mm, two to three, you have two to three strangers in a room. They'll eventually start talking with each other. When you do it virtually, the number that you need for people to start engaging is much, much higher. The good news is, is once they start to engage, then it's kind of like lighting a fire and then it really starts to go. And uh, right now, the engagement is primarily through comments on the different things threads. And I have been very gratified to see uh, the engagement of folks who are looking at the different paths that we offer and uh, uh, talking to those various individuals uh, in our faculty that offer those paths. And then other members chime in and they start asking questions. Now, the, the platform is designed for anybody to post, but it's very intimidating to post on a platform where you see the only people who are posting are the faculty members. So you overcome that with numbers. Uh, John and I are closing in on a thousand uh, subscribers now. And you know, hopefully when we get to a little bit higher number, that will kind of spontaneously erupt because on our platform, we're completely private. We don't boost we don't uh, sell advertising. I mean, we have a few uh, affiliate links, but the whole thing is really a mission of service uh, and because John and I have been very fortunate in our career and we need to pay that good fortune forward. Just like you, Jen, with Doc working in your personal mission, uh, the folks that are doing all this coaching, I mean, we like to market and whatnot, but really it's, it's a, it's a, it's a labor of love because nobody is getting rich doing this as opposed to um, getting rich, um, uh, putting folks on the treadmill and uh, running them until they drop. To kind of shift the subject a little bit, I'm thinking about all of the people who are listeners who've told us that they're interested in social media, but they don't know where to start. And I know you have been making some headway on TikTok in the name of, of NewScript. And I'm curious what that experience has been like. Well, first of all, there's been no lip syncing. There's no twerking. Dr. Davis doesn't twerk. I don't want people to flee. I want people to come. Um, TikTok is the latest expression of the idea that the internet has lowered the barriers to connectivity to the point where anyone with special knowledge and every physician, every healthcare worker has special knowledge anyone with special knowledge can connect with a large group of people. And if you do that, if you can create a, uh, a tribe for lack of a better word, that really wants to engage with you, whose needs you really serve, then you can earn a living servicing that tribe before the internet. You had, had to go through a gatekeeper. You had to go through a, a literary agent or a casting director in order to put yourself in front of a, of a group of people and develop your own audience. But now with the internet, it's it, the barriers are non-existent. And then comes short form video, which is uh, uh, TikTok, and uh, the barrier gets even lower still. And best of all, Jen. Uh, as we have seen over the past couple of months with chat GPT and GPT-4, uh, the content on the internet is increasingly going to become homogenized uh, computer, homogenized AI created crap. It's all going to be the same. There's not going to be any authenticity. You can even see it on TikTok with all the filters that people put on them to make themselves look better. Well, what sells in an area of, in an era of homogeneity, what sells is authenticity. That's what people want. So I certainly don't use a filter. I just started point, pointing a camera at me and spouting what I thought was wisdom. And uh, the engagement that I received was incredible. And a year, about 15 months ago, I threw out a, um, I threw out a TikTok talking about how the nurses had transitioned into uh do, doing agency work. And when they did that, they were able to flat treble their compensation, treble it, not double, but treble it. 
and they were so effective that various health systems tried to get state laws passed to prevent them from doing that. Well, we can all imagine how that how well that went over. Uh, and I use that as an example of what will happen if the physicians actually could sell their labor into a free market. Now, it can't happen because uh, it's it'd be way too expensive and it would cost a lot of CEOs a good part of their compensation. But as a thought experiment, if you stepped outside the system and sold your expertise at the free market level, you could make way more money or you can make the same amount of money with far less labor. And the, the nurses have proved that. So I threw that video out there. And it got, it went kind of viral. I mean, I got tens of thousands of likes, thousands of comments, and it was only like my 10th TikTok video. And that absolutely convinced me of the power of TikTok. Uh, for those of you out there who are thinking about using it, uh, a practical piece of advice is be consistent in your release. Release your release your uh, content on a consistent basis, build an audience, and then drive that audience to someplace where you can serve them freely. And after they have grown comfortable to you, then you can start having them engage with you in exchange for a couple of bucks. And before you know it, you have a nice revenue stream, and then you learn how to build on that until you know, you're independent. And if you go away, you'll be missed. You are desperately needed. And Jen, TikTok is by far the easiest path to do that. And now that everything else is going to be just just AI uh, garbage, uh, you your face on there spouting your hard earned wisdom is going to be uh, immensely valuable to a group of people that desperately needs to engage with you. Well, thank you for sharing that story. I think that a lot of people will find that inspiring. And speaking of inspiration for people who are interested in on clinical pathways and figuring out a way to either step off the treadmill or step off the treadmill some of the time or all of the time. Tell me about what you and John Jerica have coming up through, through, I believe it's through new script, right? What are you guys, what do you have brewing for, for April? Well, one of the things that our subscribers have been asking for is some sort of focused experience where they can engage more deeply with a broad number of faculty members. And so everybody uh, doing these kind of summits or these experiences, especially for non-clinical careers, I mean, it's not at all uncommon, uh, but we decided based on our, our interviews and our our polling of our subscribers that what was wanted was a chance to really engage, not just to be didactic and just hear what somebody has to say, but to really engage with uh, with the faculty members. And when we started going over and looking at the other kind of similar experiences, we found that there's a very, very limited time for Q&As. So we constructed uh, our first annual summit. Uh, where you can engage with our faculty members. Like I said, we're location independent. And uh, one of the challenges is always, uh, is always internet connectivity. Um, what we did, Jen, is we created a system where uh, the, the presenters will only uh, do a didactic kind of lecture thing for about 10 minutes, something of importance about the path that they represent. And then almost all of the other time is going to be you asking questions because most people have the same questions and engaging with that. That's something completely different than most of these types of experiences have. And we're very excited to be able to do this. We already have several hundred people enrolled to come and uh, um, everyone is welcome to join. Uh, it's uh, it's most cost effective if you join live. We will be recording the sessions. Uh, the longer after you uh, after we have the summit that you purchase those recordings, the the more expensive it's going to be because they're increasing costs associated with it. But uh, we invite everybody to come on. There's going to be discounts associated with uh, new script if uh, if you come on and join us and. Again, Jen, nobody is getting rich doing this. We are just physicians who have been very successful. We see a huge gap. We see a huge need. We recognize that the real pandemic is physician well-being. And uh, we are just trying to do our best uh, to pay our good fortune forward and uh, help others like we ourselves were helped in our journey. 
Wonderful. And the summit is on non-clinical careers. Is that right? Is that the topic overall, the overarching topic? That's correct. And we have a lot of ex- very exciting topics. We have a young lady who is a physician and she works with a, a developmental group that goes around the world uh, doing location independent uh, career change. I mean, she basically travels the world working with this small group. She has her own coaching website and uh, and uh, audience, and that's how she lives. Uh, I, I find myself being incredibly envious of her. Uh, we also have careers for folks that don't have residencies, uh, either partial res, either internships or no residencies at all. So we have alternatives for all those folks. John and I are trying to take care of the broadest spectrum possible, including folks that uh, work in other countries that want to come over to the U.S. Uh, we cover a lot of that different space. Uh, you know, we're trying to give people ideas and hope as they move from the pre-contemplative to the contemplative phase to know that, um, that the treadmill isn't the end, that the treadmill is just the beginning of your professional life. I love the concept. And is it only physicians who are attending or other professionals in healthcare as well? Well, not just clinicians. Uh, we have nurses signing up. We have a few, um, a uh, few therapists, speech and occupational therapists, and pharmacists. And the pharmacists are the big ones too. They are signing up because you know their profession is uh, is not recognized as having a lot of value in the system today. But I can tell you, Jen, uh, if you go out and check out YouTube, um, you can, or even on the internet, you can see registered pharmacists who have created their own audience answering questions, not providing clinical care, but answering questions, selling their expertise in various ways, and really getting out from under really bad situations and uh, uh, and living a life of uh, fulfillment and joy. Terrific role models for people who are looking for that. And are some of those people going to be at the summit? Isn't anyone like that speaking at the summit? So, uh, we have speakers that are for people who are not uh, physicians, and then we also have uh, attendees that are going to be there. And as you all know, having engaged with many of these yourselves, you learn as much from the attendees than you do from the faculty members. And that's really why we're trying to push as diverse a uh, uh, an audience as possible. And hopefully that's what makes this experience unique. It's our first one. We plan on doing it every year, uh, informed by the response and the reaction and, and how things go. If someone listening is interested in finding out more, what can they do to to where can they find information about the summit other than our show notes where I will put the link, but if someone wants to just Google it, is there some place that they can look and see? I'll put a link in the show notes as well. Go ahead and click on the link. Um, you can follow John and I, t- uh, TikTok stars as we are uh, at the non-clinical career coach on TikTok. Uh, be gentle in your comments. Remember we, we, we are, um, we are Johnny come late leads to the short form video. Uh, or you can download, go to a new script app, dot app, download the community and, uh, and start, uh, start lurking, start engaging. Uh, our faculty members are on it every day. So if you get a question, we'll get right back to you. Um, and uh, we're here to serve. Terrific. I love what you're doing, Tom. And I also love the nomadic part of what you're doing. I love that you're able to control your life and live where you want, when you want, and uh, be connected to the outdoors. It's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle that I admire and spend more time doing that in the future. So I'm, I'm always fascinated. Jen, there's nothing like doing telemedicine uh, on the Italian Riviera or on a glacier in Canada. Uh, in January, I was working in Fairbanks, doing remote work in Fairbanks. And in the next week, uh, once our van is fixed, uh, we're going to be heading uh, back north again. And uh, I expect a month from now, I'll be doing work uh, next to a glacier in Montana. So, you know, it, it's all about choices in your life. There are so many options out there. And when you have the industry mandated blinders on, on the treadmill, being told, never being told you're good enough. It's easy to get to get the feeling that this is all there is to life. There is an entire world out there 
and the health of the system is not on your shoulders. Your personal health is. And once you take care of your wellness, then you can take care of the wellness of your patients and be the professional that you always dreamed of being. I love that. Thank you so much for coming back on the podcast, Tom, and for sharing your wisdom. I'm inspired by you and I know our listeners are as well. And I look forward to seeing you on the new script platform. It's been a privilege. Thank you, Jim. And thank you for joining us today on Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. As a practicing board-certified physician, I know firsthand that time is our most precious commodity. I also know I wouldn't be where I am today without the support of coaching. At Doc Working, we can help because we deliver meaningful, confidential, affordable, and scalable well-being support. In order to do that, we've brought together a team of expert coaches and a 24-7 care line staffed by experienced therapists and counselors available around the clock 365 days a year. We take pride in answering your calls with a person, not a recording. We provide success coaching designed to take minimal time, and we deliver it straight to your inbox every single week. This is not just for doctors. This is for everyone on your team. Having access to the Doc Working Thrive Wellbeing Portal is like a lifeline in your back pocket that you can call anytime, supporting you to chart the course to success and fulfillment on your own terms, as only you can define for yourself. Our team is already helping over 80,000 healthcare professionals. We're here to help you and your team too. Please go to docworking.com and join our community today, or click below in the show notes to join us. Thank you so much again for being here with us for Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast.